Okay, this is a Dell um, W2600 uh, LCD TV. It's a 720p TV. This was a trash find. It does not work. Um, I've already powered it up and it does nothing. It turns on, the LED comes on, and that's it. Um, it's already been taken apart by the previous owner so I'm hoping it hasn't been too badly mangled inside but um, oh, flip it down here this thing weighs a ton okay and the here's the Now, these TVs are known to have problems, mainly problems with the uh, main control board. So, we're going to open it up here and see what we have inside. Okay, it looks like all the covers are still there. Okay, so now I believe the problems that these have are with one of the chips on the main control board. And um, it's one of the chips like this. I don't know if it's that, that chip, but it's a... Uh, surface mount chip and the problem with them is the solder joints break free and the TV stops working. Um, but just a quick look here shows that that's probably not the problem or if it is the problem it isn't the only problem because I've noticed this connector here on the power board is a little bit melted. Not sure what this goes to. Okay, I'm gonna have to, it's kinda stuck, so I'm gonna have to Oh, there we go. Okay, that's doesn't say what it's for but we have ground and positive 14 volts um, so we're going to power this up with this connector disconnected and see if we can get anything with that um, the ground wires look okay but all of the um, positive connectors are completely toast um, I'm not sure where where this goes we're gonna have to do a little bit more dismantling here it looks like because um, this is the power supply this is the main logic board uh, we have our AV board over here doesn't look like that goes to that it doesn't look like that connects to any of the other that doesn't match any of the connectors for that so it might go to the inverter board um, just a quick look here at the power supply board and <clears throat> we don't appear to have any bulging capacitors or anything so hopefully the power supply is okay and um, yeah so I'll get my meter and we'll test that out to see if we're getting the proper voltages on that and we'll be right back okay so we're back we've got the meter here and power attached and let's power it up see what happens the power button is broken off 
So we're just going to hit it here with this and turn it on. Okay, power supply sounds like it's come up okay. It's not cutting out. Okay, well the power LED is still on. I'm assuming blue means that it's on. So that seems to be okay. So let's check for 14 volts on these. The main boards are mounted on the back of this cage here. And apparently this, which I'm assuming is going to the inverter board, is mounted inside the cage. Well, to get into the cage, you've got to remove the entire plastic housing of the unit, which involves probably about 40 little tiny screws. Um, of course, and there's always one that does not want to come out. So that I kind of just ripped out of the housing there. And um, now I've got to remove the actual LCD panel to get inside. Okay, so that was a bit easier. Only eight screws, nine screws if you include the screw on the grounding strap for the um, LCD signal connector. So this here is the signal processing board for the LCD. And I was correct that this burnt cable is going to the inverter board but we'll remove this panel here and see what we have underneath that. Okay, so we've got the cover off and here is our inverter board. And there is eight tubes for the backlight. And um, looking at it, just visually it appears to be fine. There's no burnt traces, no, nothing looks like it is even overheated. So, I'm wondering if the whole issue wasn't just a faulty connector and which caused a bad connection, caused it to overheat and in turn melt everything. Because I would think if something is, was shorted on the inverter board itself that these connections down here would probably have damage to them as well. But in fact they look perfect. I mean, there's nothing, nothing to indicate any kind of overheating or any sort of damage on that. So, I'm going to see if I can somehow either scrape this off, clean it off, do something with it, and possibly try and power it up again after I make sure that there's contact and to see if I can get any response out of it whatsoever. Because I mean, the, the unit doesn't turn off, but it's not coming up either. Of course, with the um, display not turning on, with the backlights not coming on, I can't tell if there's any sort of display on the screen or not. Um, so, and as the inverter board is tied into the video processing board, I'm not sure if there's possibly, if there's no backlight, then there's no picture, or... I'm not sure how the system works. So, 
we're going to see what I can do about that and we'll be back in a little bit I guess okay and a little further poking around on the inverter board here we have four fuses which are 120 volt 3 amp fuses two here and then two on the other circuit and just a quick test here with continuity tester see if I can do this with one hand successfully probably not up oh, there we got it the camera will pick up the tone that the multimeter is generating the fuses all four are testing good so that again leads me to believe that there is not a problem with the inverter board because if there was if there was a short on the inverter board itself then it should have just blown those three amp fuses because three amps is not a lot um, but if there is a bad connection and it starts arcing then three amps probably would be well it definitely would be at 120 well it's actually going to be 14 volts but still 14 volts at three amps is enough if it's arcing to cause this so again I'm back to um, assuming not assuming just guessing that the problem is this push on connector all along um, so I'm going to see what I can do about that and like I said I'll be back um, but before I go I'll just do a quick it's actually a Samsung LCD panel that's a little better um, made in Korea but yeah so we'll be back all right so I actually put it back together and I have my my 600 watt sun gun blasting right on the screen and as you can see there's there is something I can see like color test pattern or something scrolling around on it on the LCD screen so the television apparently appears to work it's just the problem is the inverter we're not getting a backlight on it um, so as soon as I can figure that out we'll have a good working 26 inch 720p TV um, yeah so I'll tear it back apart again well it's not actually together it's just kind of sitting here apart on the table but I turn this off but I'm now going to go ahead and play with the connector there and see if I can get something to come out of that or figure something out for that to get it working and yeah so I'll be back when I'm done with that okay well I've been thinking and thinking about how to report um, to clean and repair this connector and the um, connector on the cable and this connect this the pins on this connector have been heated to the point where they're they feel like they're about ready to break off so I'm not even going to bother trying to clean them I'm just going to replace the connector and I'm going to replace it with this which is actually um, part of a floppy disk connector from an old Pentium 2 motherboard that I had laying around so I'm going to solder this in in place of it the pin spacing is the same and one thing that I noticed that's odd about this is that the S video input and the I believe it's the um, yeah the composite input and the two audio 
inputs that go with the composite and two audio inputs that go with the S-Video input are actually part of the power supply board and tied in with this cable here. 